Next up, we have Scott, um, who's developed CircuitPython, talking about interface design and open source hardware and software. If you told me 10 years ago we'd all be running interpreted languages on microcontrollers, I would tell you that you were nuts. But here we are. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Nadia. Thanks for having me. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Scott, and I go by, by Tanute online. Uh, I am paid by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython, which is a version of Python for tiny microcontrollers. And I wanted to just cover some open source electronics and hardware interface stuff. And uh, if you come away with nothing else, uh, it's to think outside in for better interface design. So what do I mean? Um, first, an interface is a boundary between two things. That's super vague on what I mean, uh, but we'll go into some more details in just a bit. But uh, Generally, interface between two things. Uh, and a well-designed interface, in my mind, is an interface that defines the what without revealing the how. Um, and this allows for abstraction, of abstracting the how of something's done into the what. And this allows for reuse of knowledge of other things. The, my, uh, the example I like to say is a steering wheel. Uh, you can have a steering wheel on a car or a boat, and they work different ways, but they achieve the same thing. They do the same what. Um, so in this talk, I just want to go over, uh, some design stuff and, uh, I want to talk about the feather format, uh, and we'll get into some software stuff later as well. But this is a, a, a format that Adafruit created a few years ago, uh, Lady Ada created it and, uh, it's been hugely, hugely successful as a kind of a, a standard interface for microcontroller development boards, uh, which you can see on the left, there's a whole variety of them. And then on the right-hand side, there's all these sort of uh, add-on boards that that stack on top, um, and they're called feather wings. So uh, the interface of feather that has kind of defined how the microcontroller boards talk to the feather wings has been really successful, and we can see that by the plethora of them that are available. Um, so we're going to talk about what made that really good and and show some things that are kind of on the fringes um, that we can take some lessons away from. So first, if you want to know more about Feather, there's github.com slash Adafruit slash awesome feather that will link you to all of the feathers and the spec and all that stuff. Um, so check that out. Um, so I want to talk about interfaces in kind of three categories. Uh, first is mechanical, which is the shape of something. Electrical, which is uh, the compatibility of the signals on where they are. And then lastly, software. And software is a really broad topic. Uh, it includes both the software that you're writing on it, but also the experience of using the, the software on the device. Uh, so let's dive in. So this is a picture I found of, uh, it's got six different feather wings. They're all the same size, which is amazing that mechanically you can fit them all together. Uh, but the thing in the middle is a, is a case designed by Noe and Pedro. And I, I highlighted it here, but it's interesting that one of the two uh, slot one of the like mounting holes is actually a slot and the reason that is is that um although the feather spec says this is the standard size it does give you this op option to be longer than it and there is one uh feather that i know of that is actually longer and uh as a result this case that's compatible with feathers has to have a slot instead of uh mounting holes and this is a a case a, a perfect example of what happens when you design something from the inside out, right? This case was designed to fit whatever would be inside of it. And the uh, like the less explicit it was about the the distance between mounting holes has caused uh, this variance to leak out into the design of the case as well. So that's mechanical. Uh, mechanical, I would say, uh, in this is not exhaustive, but encompasses the board size, the component size, the electrical connection location, and the mounting hole location as well. Um, here you can see uh, a PCB manufacturing drawing with all the dimensions on it. Um, generally, Feather done this really well, and the vast majority of them go with that mechanical one. Uh, next up, I want to talk electrical. Um, so this is a, a NeoPixel Feather Wing. and uh, it takes one signal and it changes it through all of the NeoPixels. Now, if you look at the, the number of connections on the Feather spec, there's a lot of spots that that signal could be. Um, and to see where that is, you, you can take a look at the back. Um, the back has this uh, 
a ton of jumpers. Most of them are not uh, configured by default. The one that I've highlighted is the one that's actually the default uh, signal pin for the NeoPixel Feather Ring. But this goes to show that um, protocol matters a lot, designating pins for particular protocols. And if you don't, if you haven't been explicit with what that is, um, you get things like this where you need to allow for uh, customization and things like that. Um, so electrical builds on top of mechanical interfacing by put like locating where all of the, the electrical connections are, perhaps the connector format as well. Um, on top of that, it designates particular kind of electrical nets as particular functions or protocols, capabilities, um, like analog digital converter versus digital only uh, voltage levels and whether they're input or output. So these are all things you should consider as, as design decisions when you're creating open source hardware, uh, meaning electronics or um, software, which is next. So here is one feather uh, that I've blanked out the middle so you can't see exactly what kind it is. Um, but I wanna take, uh, I wanna show off that there are all of these names around the outside. And these are names that will um, be used in the software to re reference particular electrical connections, right? Like which pin headers are which. So um, here's a second one. And if you notice, uh, if I flip back and forth, uh, the SCL and SDA are in the top right corner. And that's true for both. That means that uh, you can use I squared C consistently between the two things. And that's awesome. And all of the feather wings have been built, many, many, many of them have been built around that. And they're just, they just work, which is amazing. Uh, but what has changed is that the, the numbers here, the 13, 10, 11, uh, 13, 12, 11, 10, et cetera, on the top is actually different. Um, and that means that if you use those pins, you actually do need to change. Your software needs to change. If you've ever seen, um, <laughs> if you've ever seen example code in Arduino or CircuitPython where there's different chunks that have been commented out saying like, oh, if you're using this or if you're using that, um, pick these pins instead. That is uh, an artifact of the, the spec for these parts of the interface not being explicit enough potentially. Uh, in this case, it's actually because it's different form factor boards. So that's like, you can't really get away with that. Um, so yeah, software names matter a lot. Um, <laughs> if you take nothing away, think really hard about what you name pins on the on the PCBs that you design. Uh, if they are as the same as another form factor, please, please match them because those are names that are used in software or numbers in Arduino's case. Um, interaction matters a lot too. So how you use it, what you do originally, how you, how you get software on a device and what, uh, <laughs> what software is on there by default also matters a ton. Um, and the more consistent you can be, uh, the more exact you can be to other boards of that same interface, uh, the better the experience for folks uh, because they can reuse knowledge. So for example, uh, we have a bunch of libraries for different drivers in CircuitPython. And we've only been able to do this because we have a pretty strong abstract uh, hardware API layer. So we have 250 plus libraries that build on top of this. This is the, the, the stuff that you can reuse if your interfaces are designed well enough to share across. Furthermore, and I don't think people always uh, think about this, and this is why I want to highlight it, is that um, all of the tutorials and documentation, the YouTube videos people have made about using your product, uh, using your PCB you've designed, uh, the thing that the PCB goes in. Um, you can reuse all that knowledge if when you make a version two or you make something that's compatible to the interface, you do it the same. Um, we've seen this with the circuit, bringing CircuitPython to the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's like, oh, just use all these tutorials that we already have. It works the same way. Uh, it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. So here's three tips. Uh, from me to you about how to make an interface that I think is better designed. Uh, you're never going to get a perfect interface, uh, as we see with Feather. Very, very, very good, but still has these edge cases that are a little weird. Um, so the first thing and the, and the primary thing I'd love you to take away from this is think outside in. What I mean by that is do not, please, please, please do not start at the data sheet. 
Um, the data sheet is there to give you all of the details that you need to know at the lowest level. This is all about the how, it's not about the what. Um, so instead, what I really like to do is I like to start with example code. So write code that you that um, you would use to use the device that you're making or write a tutorial or think about the tutorials you're going to do first. Start from that, the outside of like how you're going to use it, what you're going to do with something. Create uh, interfaces, whether it's mechanical, electrical, or software, to allow you to do the, the what that you want to do. And then you can worry about how you want to do it. Um, so if you start with an, uh, an example like this, what you get is an API where it's much simpler. It doesn't reveal the insides, the internals that the data sheet gives you. All it does is it gives you, in this case, like, oh, I want to measure temperature and humidity, which also means that you can interoperate all of the other sensors that want to measure temperature and humidity if you've designed an interface to allow you to do that. Second, uh, second of the three, I want you to, I want to say be explicit. When you're creating something you think is an interface, whether it's a one-off right now, but you might do one in the future, be as explicit as you can be. Uh, Feather's done really, really well because the bus pins in particular were placed at particular locations and very well specified. So that means like you are I squared C spy are all very well defined in the, in the uh in the Feather spec. And actually, it's interesting here, too. You can see that I2S, which is an audio codec, is explicitly not defined. Uh, because, uh, And so the more explicit you are, the better, I think. All right. And last up, um, I want you to be strict. So this is an implementation. So when you're implementing uh, an interface, whether somebody called it an interface or not, whether you're just making a V2 of your product, uh, be very strict about what you're going to name th things on the silk screen, uh, where you're going to position them, what functionality, what electrical protocols and stuff the particular pads can do. The more similar, the more exactly the same you can make it, the more you can reuse from that previous generation of product or products that you have. Um, you can reuse the, the code, the examples, the tutorials. Um, that's just like, Highly recommended. Uh, here's an example as well of uh, in CircuitPython, we have the equivalent of CPython's time module. But what we've done is we've made it a strict subset because we can't fit everything. Uh, by being a strict, su strict subset that allows you to start from this core that works exactly the same and move that code up into desktop Python as well if you want to. Uh, this is a, a pure software case where we're strictly implementing an interface. All right, so to wrap up and overview, remember interfaces are three things. They're mechanical, electrical, and software uh, when it comes to open source hardware design, meaning electrical. I always see all these mechanical things and I'm like, very cool, but not, not the world I live in. Uh, to, to design one well, three tips and not exhaustive. Think outside in, start from what you want to achieve. Don't leak out how you're going to achieve it. Be explicit when you're designing an interface. As much as you can, be very specific about where mounting holes are, what protocols protocols are on what pins, et cetera. And lastly, uh, be strict when you're implementing an existing interface, uh, even if that interface was not explicitly defined when it was first created. Awesome. Thank you, Scott.